guys, what's up? My name is the Cool Mike, and welcome back with another episode of Berry. So, without further ado, let's continue. In the last episode, uh, we met uh, Strickland, one of the doctors that we met, got killed by General fucking I don't know his name anymore. Uh, by a general, or what you call someone who's in charge of the facility. Barksdale, that's his name. I just saw it. So Dr. Strickland got shot and Amy and I and Dennis, my friend, was shocked to know that this Barksdale dude is psycho. Has gone crazy because he wants he, he apparently doesn't care about the entities going out in the surface uh, out of the surface or out in the surface to take over the planet. He's only focused and concentrated about his experiment. So let's continue. And let's see what's gonna happen from there. Oh god, things are about to be bad. I can tell it. Alright. I wonder if Barstel is even crazier than Marcus. He just shot a woman that worked for him to keep her quiet. Surely he won't have an issue with killing me. Now, Barstel yells. No more whispering, no secrets. Who there will stay in here. And get away from that door. If anyone whispers one more thing, I'll blow your heads off. My mind is racing to figure out a way to get through the second door and into the hangar. Beyond that, of course, there was a fail safe switch. Insult Barksdale? Make a distraction. Let's not insult Barksdale. He has a powerful gun that can blow someone's head off. Make a distraction, giving the others a chance to think so that we can figure out a plan to escape this crazy psychopath who is about to kill us. Make a distraction. I try my best to be a good actor as I wobble on my feet a bit. I stop, start forward again and then wobble some more. Amy is apparently catching on because she is at my side in a second. She looks over at Marshall and says, he's, a lot, he's lost a lot of blood. Let me check his wounds really quick. After he dares to talk to me like that, after he dared to talk to me like that, he's been through a lot, she argues. He's clearly delusional. Dennis seems to not quite know what's going on, but luckily Bartol isn't paying attention to him. You can't check him back here, Bartol says. You have 30 seconds to get away from that door or I will. I stretch out my acting skills and actually stumble to a knee. I make a show of trying to get to my feet and stand still for a moment. I'm okay, I say. I'm okay, I think. I. As quickly as I can, I raise my gun and fire. I don't even take an aim. I just fire in Barstow's general, di general direction. Barstow takes off running as my shot misses while he runs for over to the back of the room. That's all we need. Amy also fires a shot to keep him under cover as we head for the door. Amy pushes a button and the door swings open. Barstow will be on us in a second. So we dash out into a hangar ready to defend our dog. All three of us ran as fast as we can through the rows of barrel. Right away, though bark snail gun parts separate us. I hear a shot hit a nearby as I dive down and realize that neither Dennis nor Amy is with me. I hear Amy cry out for an elf from an elsewhere in the barrels. Peering around the barrel crosses to me. Uh, sorry. Peering around the barrel crosses to me. I can see Dennis is he is falling slowly on the floor, two rows away from him. Seeing him, I move so slowly, I can't imagine how he's finding the strength to do even that. Stop this nonsense, Barstow yells at us. I've got a good mind to shoot the fuel and kill all of you. Then that I realize that not getting away from these barrels may be our death sentence. Not that to get away, run away. Fuck. Uh, if I tell them to get away, they... they if I tell them to get away, they, the chances are they may escape and it might get me killed. If I run away, most likely they're gonna die. Uh, technically, if this was me, I would run away. Because that would literally scare the living shit out of me. There's barrels of fuel everywhere and that guy who's about to kill me as a gun. And he could just shoot it and all goes kaboom. But... 
I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try tell them to get away. Hopefully, they escape. It's an important decision, apparently. Before I can do anything, a shot comes from the ascension chamber. It's immediately followed by being down in a massive wall of heat. I feel the heat before I feel the force of the explosion. It occurs several rows ahead of me, and I can still feel the physical push of it. I hear Dennis scream and then, and then the clanging of metal. That's when another barrel explodes and then another. I realize that I could run back to the top or try to get myself clear. I might not even enough time to do it either before the next round of Russian What the hell should I do? I'm gonna run back to back to help Dennis and Annie or run away in the other direction. I'm gonna check if my friends are still alive. Because you decided to run into the flames to help. My instinct to help overcomes my instinct to survive. If I don't help them now, the exploding virus will leave Dennis and Nami through the dead. I turn and start heading their way, but I'm not quick enough. Another barrel blows up between us and throws me back across the hangar floor. My face and arms scream with the unmeasurable pain of deep burns as I'm lifted from the ground and thrown forward by the explosion. I slowly muscle myself up off the ground and try to regain my footing. My entire body feels sore, begging me to just stop. And I look back for Dennis and Nami, the scene is not promising. Neither of them seem to be able to move on their own. Dennis is lying flat on his face, and moving Amy is about 20 feet away from him. She's waiting, she's waiting in pain and clutching her leg. Well, fuck. Behind them, I can see Barton looking for a shot to the fire and evaporate liquid nitrogen. I fire up a single shot just to get him to duck back down. I look back out to Dennis and Nami and see the fire nearing the fuel barrel. I can maybe keep Barstow pinned down long enough to pick them up one by one and help them walk to the elevator. But more barrels could blow any moment. I might only have time to save one of them. Now Dennis first, help Andy first. This is this is why I hate decision games like this. Um, if I help Dennis, he's a friend of mine, obviously, but he's wounded and apparently he's gonna slow me down. Help Ami, Ami knows about the lock switch, or the switch, that needs to be activated in order to disable or shut down the facility so that all the entities will not escape, killing all of us. And she might, but she's also wounded. I'm gonna flip a coin, because apparently I don't know who to choose. I'm not, I'm not being heartless here, guys. I know Dennis is my friend and you guys are gonna say, Help Dennis. Did I help Dennis? I have a coin. I mean... You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna go with Dennis. I kinda wanna help Abby and the thing. But I don't know which is choose. I'm gonna flip a coin and let, and let the coin decide because apparently I don't know what to do. Heads if it's Dennis. Tails if it's Amy. And I didn't even catch the coin. There you go. It's heads. So apparently we're gonna save Dennis. Dennis it is. We just to help Dennis first. I take a deep breath and sprint back out in the open around the fire and the heat right away. Heat. Right away I start talking blind shot at Parksdale. He fires back only once and the shot goes off into glowing flames around me. I take one more shot and then reach down for Dennis. He's basically dead weight at this point. It's almost too heavy for me, but I managed to get him to his feet. It's almost too heavy uh heavy for me and my wood the shoulder screams in pain as I get him to his feet. I drag him back narrowly, avoiding the fire and then I try shooting at Barksdale, but trying to aim the gun while carrying Dennis proves to be too much. Barksdale gets a single shot off as we round the corner to where the elevator went. I set Dennis down and he's still unresponsive. He's probably dead, most likely. Drenched in sweat, I wheel around and head back out to get at me. I only make it a single step before I see her. I open my mouth to hold to her, but an explosion right beside her cuts me off. She's shoved hard to the left from the force of the explosion. I ran to help, but Martha is firing again. And I gave Amy one last forgetful look and then rushed back to the elevator and Dennis. My nerves are drenched in fear and adrenaline. 
when I reach out to press the call button on the elevator, it feels like I'm watching someone else do it. And then it's, and I step inside the motors on the elevator, squeal like dying dogs. It's an old service elevator made of wood and metal, like something from a coal mine. As the elevator slides down, the light from the plane slips away to complete blackness, and now it's just me and Dennis once again. Okay. Continue. Wow. Holy shit. I think it's time we edit there. I lose track of how long the elevator descends. It's hard to tell due to the lack of lighting, but it must go another 500 feet underground. The elevator comes to a stop with a shuddering clang and I waste no time exiting a tunnel projected out of the spare white box lighting the way. Most of the wall is made of raw earth and rock but there are boards and concrete splattered in the area to use to enforce the tunnel. I see a warning sign posted on the wall. I want to read it but there's no much time. You know what? I'm gonna pause here because read notice on the wall or head through the tunnel. I'm gonna pause here. Let me guys know what you guys think about the series and I'm gonna end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or episode of Buried. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Also don't forget to subscribe now and be part of the plan. And as always, I will see you guys next time with another brand new video. This is the cool Mike signing off. Goodbye.